So I'm going to make a class here, and I'm going to call it cow, just because that's my favorite class to make. And I'm going to say int or public int moo count. Throw a little automatic property in here. Get set. Okay, and all one line, because we like to write all of our code on one line, right? No, we don't. But now generally when we instantiate a class, we just say cow, uh, or our type name, followed by the variable name, new, cow, so on and so forth. Well, in, uh, in C Sharp 3.5, they added a feature here. You can say var cow, or we'll call it cow2 gets new cow. And this looks a little bit like... Uh, uh, I don't know, JavaScript or some scripted language, dynamic languages. Um, but it's really not. What the compiler does is literally just evaluates the expression on the right-hand side and whatever this expression evaluates to, uh, what the compiler sees at compile time, it just replaces var with that. Well, since I'm returning a new cow here, the compiler replaces it with cow. Well, you may ask, well, what is the advantage of typing var over cow? Cow seems to say exactly what I want, whereas var doesn't. Well, I would happen to agree with you in that case. Yes, you should be as explicit as possible. Uh, generally, sometimes oh, I get lazy if these uh, type names are very long. For example, uh, with the generics, if I say um, oh, system dot uh, collections dot generic. Uh, let's, if we have a list here, let's make a list of cows now. So instead, I'm going to say list of cow cows gets new list of cow, right? Well, now there's a little bit more to type here. So sometimes I'll just drop var out there to be lazy. But the real reason why we even have var is for anonymous types, which you'll see in a future video. Essentially, we don't know the class name, so we're forced to type var. But... But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just save R sometimes if I'm feeling lazy or if I feel like it's more readable or it's more succinct or it's saving me a lot of headache. So, anyway, a few rules with var. You can only use the var within the scope of a function or property body. You can't actually go out here and say, you know, var, or actually, it might make more sense to do it in cow. Let's go out here in cow and say, I don't know, var, oops, var, uh, utter uh, utter capacity. <laughs> there we go, and then get set. No, that doesn't make sense, because first of all, the compiler can't even really look at this and say, uh, is this supposed to be a string, a double, maybe an integer? I don't know. So you can't do that out there. You can only do it where you can have an expression on the right-hand side of an equal sign. I can't say, like, var another, or how about var pig, right? And then say pig gets new pig, even though I don't have a pig class. Uh, the compiler, in order for comp the compiler to replace var with something, it has to be able to look at the right-hand side of an equal sign here and then replace that var with something. So var is still compile time. It's still safe. It's, it's just as uh, statically checked is what we say when the compiler can do all of its checks. It's just as statically checked as everything else. Um, just to drive home the point that it, 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 the compiler looks at the expression on the right to evaluate what should be put on the left. Uh, let me do uh, double C out. Boy, I've been doing too much C++. Double dub gets 5.3. And then um, let's just say a cow2 gets dub times 2. Well, this 2 literal here is an integer. And then dub's a double, so the compiler's smart enough to know it has to widen the integer to a double. So then this whole expression is going to return a double. So cow2 here is actually going to be a double. In fact, when I hover over it, look there, you can see it's a system dot double. So literally, it doesn't matter how complicated your expression here is on the right. It could be as simple as new cow. It could be as simple as var value gets five. Okay, hopefully you wouldn't do that, but you know you should say int there. But but it could be as simple as five, and then um, so so you see right there. Or you could do something, if you had a more complex expression there, then uh, you can do that as well. Anyway, that's all the compiler does. Just look at the right-hand side of the equal sign and replace it over here on the left. And the reason we even have vars is for anonymous types, which you'll see in a future video, um, which we, we can't say the type name on the left, so we're forced to put var.